Right, welcome to the fourth of the uh, design updates, uh, talking about uh, Project Goddess. And um, we're, as usual, we're going to go through your questions and then we're going to talk about followers. And if we've got time, we're going to talk about familiars and stuff like that. Um, you're not very well, Jack. No, I don't know what's come over me. Is it food poisoning? I don't think so. I haven't eaten anything yet. You haven't <laughs> eaten anything. All right. What did you eat last night? Because I had food poisoning of the weekend. I had pizza last night. Was it one of those warmed up pizzas? No, no, it was hot to my door. Was it? And, and hot to her to work, actually. Was yeah. it? Whose pizza was it? I can't say that. <laughs> what are you worried about being <laughs> sued? Yeah. Really? Mm. Oh, okay. Domino's pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's, let's do a bit before okay. you throw up. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> and if you do throw up, we'll stop the film filming, obviously. Yeah, we'll put a slow motion filter on. You know, it's talking about followers and they get sick, so. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, uh, what are our questions? What are our feedback? Okay, so people uh, had been wondering a little bit about. Uh, they're wondering if there was much emphasis on like a good evil affinity, like black and white. Is it going to be, or even fable? Is it going to be like your uh, that borderline good evil, mm. or is it going to be a bit more fluid, a mm. bit, bit, a bit more mm. of a, a larger spectrum? Range. Spectrum, yes. Well, um, of course, in the original populace, we uh, we had you either played the evil tribe or the good tribe. Uh, the only way we really did that was it was either blue people or red people. Obviously, we ought to do a bit more than that in Goddess. Um, so what we are going to do is we are going to measure the amount of suffering that your little people have and the amount of um, benefit that you give them as a god. And that's how we're going to measure good and evil. And um, that's the thing that we experimented with in uh, Black and White and in Fable, uh, indeed in Fable. So it's go definitely going to be a scale. Uh, we're going to be able to see how many evil people there are in the world because we've got servers now and we can say, yeah, you know, goddess, the world is trending to evil or trending to good. Uh, so it's a scale. Brilliant. Yeah. And uh, also people were wondering, is it more kind of a, a emphasis on a black and white kind of uh, sandboxy world or is it uh, primarily a strategy game like Populous mm. or is it a mix? Yeah, so this is the this is the thing which I'm sh the thing you may find hard to believe. I think it's an immensely deep strategy game. You're building your you're growing your civilization up. You're encouraging your people. Those people are power. Those people will be able to go to war. Those people will be able to give you belief. That all sounds strategy ish, but also because we've got this home world which is initially very peaceful. It's a sandbox, mm -hmm. and that's the beauty of it. The sandbox gives you the resources to use in the strategy game of multiplayer against your friends, multiplayer against strangers, or the single player campaign. So it's both. And, you know, it's a little bit of RTS in there. You know, I, I, I loved RTSs. Mm. You know, Command and Conquer Red Alert, and, uh, and, and, um, Warcraft and uh, I love those games. I've played them for hours and hours and hours, but there hasn't been any. I mean, the Starcraft, but mm. you have to have you know 300 press key presses a, a minute to actually even hope to survive Starcraft. So there is a little bit of RTS in there as well, <coughs> and I I love the depth. I love the you using the landscape as well as using Gift of the Gods as well as using some of their kinder powers strategically against your against the problems that your people face. Remember they don't only in the single player campaign especially they don't only place problems of a marauding uh, tribes attacking them, they also place the, the problems of the elements. Well what's also kind of interesting with uh, Populous and also Goddess is that it's not that you're uh, folk, it's not it's, you're not directly telling these followers do this, do mm. that. In fact, your influence is trying to uh, influence the world around them in order to kind of uh, manipulate them into yeah. carrying Except, your will. Of course, the uh, which we haven't talked about at all. Yep, that's on our yep totems. totems yeah. yeah, the one power where you can affect free you will. You can affect free will exactly. And do we really have free will? What's your view on that? You mean? Philosophy. In life, yeah. Well, you know, as uh, a tree breaks, 
Does it make a sound if no one's around? Some nonsense. Is that to do with free will? I don't know. I don't think it is. Uh, uh, <laughs> the question is, do we have free will? Uh, you mean, uh, is, do we believe in fate? So do you believe that your life <laughs> is either, is either a, just a, like a program? It is inevitable, absolutely inevitable, that A leads to B leads to C leads to D, or that, that every moment is just random, is that you have the choice, you have choices in your life. Which of the two things do you believe in? Well, I think uh, we've got us, we're not going to be giving an answer, but just raising questions. Oh, in that philosophy. That's good. Mm. That's good. Yeah, I like that <laughs> philosophy, but what's your answer? <laughs> well, I'm sure I'll find my answer through, right. through my experiences well, with God. Well, I'll tell you, um, sadly and unfortunately, <laughs> the, debate is, it was, the debate is simple. We don't have any free will. I'm no. sorry, we are, a, we are just machines A, B, C, D. That's going to be contentious. <laughs> anyway, Let's um, uh, was there a third question? Uh, well... I was just going to pick up on the the idea of the strategic elements of yeah. goddess, which okay. is that uh, ideally, if you are someone who's not really into the multiplayer and, yeah. and 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 competitive thing, you can literally just play the whole game in home world, and you're not going to be jumping in and out. No, muscle. that's true. Mm. Absolutely true. You can play the whole world, the whole game in home world. Yeah, I, I know there are some people, and sometimes I'm like this, who don't want to face the kind of embarrassment, if you like, of of going into multiplayer, they mm -hmm. may just stick in home world and be very happy to spread their people out and gain resources. Or they may be a turtle, and I'm a real turtle. I love building up a, this massive force so I can go and just totally annihilate okay. uh, um, things, especially in the single player campaign. Can we okay. talk about followers? Yes. Right. So followers are they're your little people. We're going to have to move the camera down to these sheets of paper now. So, um, and that means Jack can easily throw up without you know, being seen on camera. Um, followers, here, here, they, here we are. We've got this artwork. Remember, we're working on this prototype at the moment. As you can see in this shot, um, look at what these followers are doing. They have certain behavior, and that behavior is dictated by what's going on around them. And in this example, they're in they're in panic, oh, the pen doesn't work, panic mode. In other words, they are running away from danger. Uh, they're, you, you know, they've got little personalities. We really love this idea that, you know, when they're panic, if they're panicking or if they're walking, and they're not all the same, they've all got little personalities. Also, each one of these are gonna have a name and they're gonna have a little bit of a history to it. I know that sounds silly, but I love that detail in the world. And if these people are your friends from your Facebook account, for example, it just makes, it just, it just adds to the value. You know, if this is my, um, if this is my sister, or if this is my wife, I'm going to really look after her. If it's someone that's just beaten me at football, not that I ever played football, but you know, if it was, then I'd probably just, I'd, I'd probably just squish them. So they really do have a personality. And they really do have very um, interesting behaviour, but understandable behaviour. And so let's just go move over and look at another shot. Um, this one is more peaceful. In here, um, the, this is where the followers have started to settle. And this is a key thing to the game, is that if you give them the land... They will settle and they'll make a village and that village will turn into a town and that town will turn into a city. And that works under very simple rules. That each of these houses, the more space they have around them, the bigger that house will be. Also, each of the houses get a bonus for being higher up, so it's better to spread your, your people out over the landscape rather than having flat, boring landscapes. And then the older a house is, the taller it's built up and you can see that these really interesting structures and uh, we'll talk to Paul and he'll show you some concept shots as, um, about um, you know being inspired by you know cities in uh, in our world <coughs> also on top of that we really want to put in uh, and this is where the humor comes in and I'm going to cover these are three ideas I want your feedback directly on about whether or not it's a good idea and so let's talk about three characters. 
There's, and these are characters which you will find, these are little bonuses in the game. Each of these characters are like little tiny challenges that give you, if you complete the challenge, they will give you a huge belief bonus. Those three characters are, um, there's someone called Immortal Bob, there's Suicidal Sid, and Fragile Fiona. These are my names. This is just in an idea of my mind, by the way. Uh, I, you know, I want your feedback to say whether it's a good idea. Each one of these little characters will come out when your town it be, it be, uh, it reaches a certain kind of level. So everyone's going to get one of these characters. Now, let's talk through what these characters do. Immortal Bob is almost utterly, completely indestructible. You can squash him, you can throw him in lava, you can... You can drown, try and drown him in the sea. You can throw him off the side of a mountaintop. Every time you do, you'll have this fun, amazingly funny lines where he says, oh, that didn't hurt. You know, you need to prove it. It's an idea directly from uh, black and white. You know, oh, I've just broken my arm. You have to find the way to kill off Immortal Bob. Otherwise, and to get that belief bonus. He's like a little play thing. And then we've got... Uh, fragile Fiona. She's the opposite. The merest, the merest shock of any description, she'll just keel over and die. You know, oh, I've had a heart attack. It's, it, it's, it's directly inspired from Monty Python. Um, if you can keep her alive, you can keep her alive long enough without her tripping over something, without a, 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 she, she could be shocked by, the, by some effect going off, you'll get a belief bonus. And then lastly is Suicidal Sid, who is just wants to end it all. He will rush towards the nearest cliff edge and throw him off like a self, self off like a lemming. He'll, he'll dive into the nearest water and try and drown himself. If you can keep him alive, you'll get another belief bonus. These characters all appear in Homeworld. Is that a good idea? Is it, it I love the humor side of it. Is it trivial, is it it's too silly? Please give us your, your feedback. Anyway, <coughs> in summary, for your followers, give you belief. The more you spread them out over the mountains and the more you encourage them, the more belief they're going to give you. They're also the resource that you can use and build into armies and, and go out. And they've got, you know, really great personalities. We've run out of time to talk about familiars and pets, so we're going to pick that up again tomorrow and also tomorrow we're just going to summarize everything that we've talked about um, over the week and we're going to start looking at Jack's uh, fantastic design doc. How's that going Jack? Uh, swimmingly. It's a lie isn't it? If you can't see me it doesn't look count. <laughs> no, let me, let me answer. Have you started it? I've started thinking about it. You started thinking about it. <laughs> Right, if everybody could, uh, what's your Twitter account? At Giacomofo without C. At Giacomofo, uh, just tweet Jack and tell him to please do the document. Of course, he's trying to throw a sickie. Yeah. <laughs> he, you know, I know he hates doing documents, but there you go. Anyway, thank you very much again for following, uh, following Kickstarter. We do need your pledges. We're really worried now that you know it's you know, uh, our, our Kickstarter campaign is slowing down. We need you to tell your friends. We need you to really passionately go out there and try and get more people involved because we really want to make a great game. Thank you very much. <laughs>